is um, at the B Oasis, and this is a key thing right here. This is pesticide free spring water that comes from these mountains and it's all covered so I don't know where I've, I've looked it actually comes out this is the first place that actually comes out of the ground it's not open anywhere else so it's all underground and this is basically let's try to not drop my iPad in here that would be a disaster but uh, sitting here we even have a cup and the little ladies drink from here. Mmm. It's just delicious. This is what water should be. You know, this is such a rare commodity, water. People don't realize how little fresh water there is. You know, the world is predominantly water, okay? But only 2.5% of it is fresh. Mmm. 2.5%. And what people don't realize is of the 2.5%, 70% is inaccessible. It's either polar, it's like in the North Pole, um, ice cap, uh, South Pole, uh, Iceland, glaciers, right? And deep underground. 70% of that 2.5. What does that leave? That leaves 0.007% of the water in the world is drinkable. And EPA did a study and they tested water in America. They test everything from rainwater to, you know, lake water to every fresh water. And they discovered that 90% of that water now has what? Pesticides, herbicides, and a whole bunch of other agrochemicals in it. And uh, with chemtrails tra too, the big thing about chemtrails, why people ever think that there's, you know, all these chemicals, because they test water on mountains and stuff like that, and it has, what, all these barium sulfides or whatever, all this stuff, just do the research. So, what people don't realize is water is the most important thing for bees. Water. Not flowers, not nectar, you know, it's not about food, there's flowers everywhere. It's water. And why is water so important to bees? Well, I'll tell you. Bees use water for three things. Can you guess what the three things? Three things. They don't just drink. They use it for three things. Obviously, one of them is the obvious. Drinking. They drink the water. They need water. Every animal on this planet, every insect needs water. And you imagine that... That's a beautiful butterfly. Ah, two beautiful butterflies. Two different kinds just flew by me. So you have to imagine that Basically, uh, you know, the human body, if, not, if that 90% of the water in, in America is contaminated with agrochemicals, pesticides, herbicides, and so on, with atrazine and gly, whatever it is, from Roundup, uh, Monsanto, then a little bee body is going to be affected when they drink it. Now, like I said, there's three things that they do with the, with the, with the water. The second thing is they take it back and they feed who? Their babies, their brood. Because the, bee, the bees actually stay in the hive for like a month, right? They don't get to go out. Only the higher up bees get to go out. They get stuck in the hives. They become kind of nurse bees. They, they're learning their system. They're stuck. So they're dependent. Now you've got, all, you've got a hive with 40,000 bees. All of a sudden you got bees bringing back water. And if that water's coming back has atrazine or um, Roundup in it or anything else, what do you think it's gonna do to the little baby bee? It's gonna damage it, right? And they've done studies to show that even amounts that you can't even detect affects bees, weakens their immune systems, affects them in a lot of different ways. So that's number two, right? They feed their young. Number three, and that includes the queen. So imagine what happens if the queen gets bad, right? Gets bad water. It dies, and all of a sudden the hives die. So one bee going out getting contaminated water, and I already told you, 90% of the water, according to the EPA, is, is, is basically is, is contaminated. The odds are the bee is going to get bad water. The odds are some bee is going to go out there. So access to water is so important. The third reason, it's summertime. I want you to go inside your car in summertime and roll up the windows. Or roll them up with just a little crack. And imagine there's five of you in that car. Now, again, you have to imagine a beehive with 40,000 bees. Do you imagine how hot it gets in the hive in the summertime with all those bees working and generating heat and friction and running around? It gets massively hot. 
So the third most important aspect of water, and I'm spilling it, is basically fanning. And what they do is this, I'll try to do it. They basically, <clears throat> they kind of do that, well, a lot more efficiently. And as they do that, they flatter their wings. And if you've ever been to a park with a mister, ah, it feels so cool. Very fine water voppets are turned into this mist and pushed out. So <clears throat> these bees coming back, if they're bringing back um, nectar, oh, there's some water, they'll come down, 